So we have another email from one of my subscribers who claims to have been a Christian at one point in her life, but that she isn't anymore. She makes the claim that even though she's no longer a Christian, she still loves the Lord. Now, I've corrected her erroneous view on the love of God, but I wanted to play this clip of Paul Washer pretty much breaking it down better than I ever could. It amazes me how easy it is to convince someone and to change their minds about the love they claim to have for God when you present to them the God of the Bible. They realize they've been loving a false God. Now, most will not admit it, okay? If, but if you show them using the Bible where they are wrong, they will have no excuse, even though most will still try to attempt to excuse the truth, okay? And I like to show people with the Bible open, and I've done this to family members, where they are wrong and point them to the word of God as my sole authority, not me being the sole authority. And so even though they may hate what they see, for consciousness sake, they can't excuse it because they've seen it with their own eyes in the word. Now, repentance is not just acknowledging that you are wrong. It's, it's actually changing your mind. And most people will refuse to do that because of pride. Now, we're all quick to say, yes, I was a sinner, but a God hater. I hated God. What do you mean I hated God? It's exactly what the Bible teaches in Romans chapter one. You hated God. As a matter of fact, let me share with you something. Sunday morning is the greatest hour of idolatry in America. Did you know that? Now, people always come to me when I say you, you hated God. And they'll say, no, I didn't. And I'll say, yes, you did. No, I didn't. I loved God. No, you didn't. What do you mean I didn't love God? I loved God. No, you didn't love God. You loved a figment of your own imagination. You know, pastors sometimes will ask me to come and teach on the attributes of God. And I'll, I'll always say, you probably don't want me to do that. Why? Because it'll probably split your church. Teaching on the attributes of God will split my church. Yes, it will. Because if I start teaching on the love of God, fine. But if I start teaching on the justice of God, the holiness of God, the sovereignty of God, I'll make it about three days in most churches, if that long. And then you know what will happen? People will start standing up and go, that's not my God. I could never love a God like that. That's why people all over America today are sitting in churches and they are committing idolatry because they are not singing to the God of the Bible. They are singing to a God they made with their own minds that looks more like Santa Claus than he does Yahweh. Well, that's my God. Well, good luck. I'll never forget Richard Owen Roberts preaching in a conference that I preached in the following year. And they were telling me all kinds of stories about him and everything. I personally never met the man. But I hope this is not an urban legend, but they said he was preaching somewhere. And uh, he mentioned that AIDS was the judgment of God. And some lady got so angry she couldn't see straight and she stood up and she said, AIDS is not the judgment of God. And he said, ma'am, what is your proof? And she said, because little babies die of AIDS and therefore AIDS is not the judgment of God. And Richard Owen Roberts said this, how many little babies do you think God killed when he flooded the earth in the time of Noah? You don't love a God like that, do you? He's not politically correct. You think about it. We're talking about God. We're talking about a God that is wonderful and as terrible as he is wonderful. As C.S. Lewis always said, and I'm fond to repeat, he's not a tame lion. And, 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 and let me tell you something, young people. There's this idea today in your music and everything else that in order to be relevant, you've got to look like the world, sound like the world. Well, I've got, I got news for you. In order to be relevant, the only way to be relevant is to be totally different from the world. And totally different from most contemporary Christian musicians and totally different from all these Christian idols that are springing up. I would prefer that we put all of them in a boat, send them to an island somewhere and sing the doxology as, the, as we cut them loose and let them float. Because it does more harm than it does good. You want to be relevant? Then don't be politically correct. Be biblically correct. Oh, you're probably going to get stoned or burned at the stake. But you'll go out with the glory of God upon you.